Hello everyone, Dolphin Orville here again tonight. Tonight we're going to do another installer video with MX23. This time I'm running from the Fluxbox desktop. This is my own uh, setup with the classic Fluxbox toolbar at the top. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about Fluxbox other than that this is the ISO that i am got my live USB based on. This is real hardware again. I'm going to launch the installer here. So I'm going through the media check. I already know this media is good, so I'm going to skip the media check for now, but it will verify the itself on the media. And we'll make this bigger so we can see it. Okay, so we're going to do another custom install. Again, if you saw my last video on re doing an installation, you know that the regular install will just wipe out the whole disk and set up something that makes sense for the particular computer. Probably a root partition, maybe a home if you play with this slider right here to, to make a such at home and it will also make a boot partition if you are going to encrypt and it will make an ESP partition if you're using UEFI. But we're going to do the custom layout because this disk is already uh, partitioned at least mostly the way that I want to partition it. So we're going to go to the next step. So this is my uh, partition arrangement right now. Now this this guy here, P5, that is my main partition. P6 is the one that I made in the last video. What we're going to do is we're going to um, do a little arranging here and make a, a new uh, partition that's a little bit larger and then we're going to do a BTRFS formatted root partition for that. So let's let's do that now. You can do partitioning in the in the installer. There's there's a there's a neat little if you do a right click, you can do all kinds of new layouts. You can do a layout builder. That will wipe out the disk in favor of the new format. So that's not something you want to do if all you want to do is make a single new partition or or change some existing partitions. If you have things you want to change, you don't want to do that that part of it. Uh, but we have a little link down here. All of our ISOs come with a partitioning tool. I think the KDE one comes with K Partition Manager, and then the Fluxbox and XFC ones come with G Parted, which is kind of nice. We got a handy link. You can launch it from the menu if you want to. You can launch it any way you you really want, but we do have the link from the installer. So I'm okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine two partitions, two that I'm not using, six and seven. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to delete those. I could resize one, but I'm just going to delete them both. I don't really need them. And then I'm going to make a new partition out of the space. So that's new. And we're going to use all the space. Now, it's going to format it ext4. I'm, it doesn't really matter. The installer is going to format it again. And I, and I want to use the installer for that formatting anyway. So I'm just going to make it ext4. Done. So we hit OK. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. It shouldn't take very long to wipe out a couple partitions. Uh, this is an NVMe drive, but it should be relatively quick on any kind of media, really. So that's it. So that partition is done. We'll close the partition manager, and you will see that this has been reconfigured. There is now one P6 partition with a 60 gig drive. OK, it was two 30s, now it's a single 60. This is what I'm going to choose for my root partition. That's the slash. And for the format, I'm going to choose BTRFS. Now, when you're doing BT, you can install on a top level BTRS partition. And it'll act just like a regular, um, any other kind of format, really. You'll have all those special tricks. But, but one piece of software won't work quite right, and that's time shift. Now, what a lot of home users want to use BTRFS, ButterFS, um, they, they really they, they, they want it because of the fast time shifting snapshots. So I'm going to set this up in a way that time shift's going to work. And time shift expects root to be on a subvolume. Uh, that's a special BTRFS term, a subvolume called root and then if you want to have a separate home partition you can do it on on a subline called home and actually if you want to put your swap file on another one called swap you can uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that so we're going to add a new subline and this one's going to be uh, we're going to change this to format because I should have done format when I selected BR to best we're going to do this as root you see it's going to make an and here and it's going to be create 
the ampersand is what it looks for as a root, as what time shift will look for as the root butterfs uh, uh, butter uh, subvolume. And then we're going to make another subvolume just to show that I can. You don't have to. But classically, time shift is for system level files. So I don't want anything in my home folder to be part of the time shift snapshot. It just eats up unnecessary space because home, home changes a lot more often than, than the root partition, really. So I'm going to put that on a separate one. It's going to be on at home. OK. Now, if I was a fan of swap files, I would make another one called swap. So I would do a right click on the partition itself, add a new one. And I would say, I'm going to use that for swap. And they say it's going to be at swap. Now, that's very important. You, Technically speaking, you can put the swap file in any sub-volume you want if you use a swap file. But, but you cannot, and this isn't a time shift problem. This is a ButterFS thing. If the swap file is active, you can't do a snapshot. And not snapshot like an X, I mean a ButterFS snapshot. Uh, that's, a, that's a feature of the of the file system. So I actually, when I'm using ButterFS, I don't do this. I, I don't, I don't, I don't do this. I'm, I'm not going to have swap on there. And I'm going to use a classic swap partition, which is simple and doesn't get in the way of time shifting snap shots, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to hit next. It's going, uh, you know what? Look, I forgot to specify an ESP partition. I do not want to continue. I want to specify the ESP partition that is right there. It's going to preserve it. That's correct. Preserving swap, that's fine. ButterFS, making swatch home, okay. Click next. Okay, here's all the things we're going to do. We're going to reuse ESP. We're going to make the ButterFS. We're going to reuse as swap. Yes, go, do your thing. Installing Grub on the ESP, that's where I want it. I could make a swap file again, but I'm not going to for reasons stated earlier. Clicking next, this is the classic user setup that we've seen a million times, but this is a Fluxbox install. Um, no Samba server on this one, and I don't care about domains. All this junk's the same because this is where I live. And then I'll set up my user. Um, well, let me go back. Maybe I want to change that. So locale, yes, that's correct. America time zone, New York, uh huh. 12 hour time format, that's actually correct. You can change it to your own specifications. I'm going to use auto login because that's my jam. And now I'm going to stop this video here because for reasons unknown to me, ButterFS installations take about three times as long as regular EXT installations for the same copy operation. So I'm going to stop and we'll come back once the copying new file system is done. Okay, the sys configuration is done and we're going to go ahead and reboot back into the Fluxbox installation that's sitting on the ButterFS partition that we just created. We're, now we're back after the reboot on our MX installation. I did not save my desktop changes from the installer, so you can see the wall pack papers back to being the default. The standard configuration instead of my custom configuration is back. Conky's running, all that sort of thing. Now I pre-installed time shift on this system uh, ahead of time, so we can try to do a better FS. Uh, option now. I see it, it knows it can do it because it's what's offering it. If you didn't, it would be you would be left with rsync, and that looks all correct. That's my disk. This is the one we want to back up. We do a next. This will daily. It says how many to keep and all that sort of thing, and we can hit finish. Time shift is active, and I think we can make one. Yes. There it goes. We've made a snapshot of the base default system. Now, if I went through and installed a bunch of stuff and restored from time shift snapshot, it would literally roll back everything that happened since the last snapshot was taken. That's kind of the beauty of ButterFS, one of the beauties. There's a lot of other things that are interesting for file system administrators. If you're interested in knowing more about BTRFS, there's a ton of resources online about it. Check it out. I am not an expert in BTRFS and ButterFS. I know enough to do what I just did and run a time shift snapshot. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post at forum.mxlinux.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.